The Halloween franchise is known for its many twists, turns, retcons, reboots, masks, portrayals, and so much more. Needless to say, the franchise is messy, and that has led to a number of different timelines, some good, some bad, some just confusing. So today, I will be ranking the Halloween franchise timelines on this episode of Ranking Rumble. Purely and simply evil. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. The Halloween franchise is kind of like a choose your own adventure kind of story. There are a lot of different directions you can go. And to be honest, I like that about the franchise. For me, which timeline I watch depends on my mood. Sometimes I'm in a Thorn trilogy kind of mood, so I take that route. Other times I may be in the mood for the 20 year timeline and go that way. It really is up to you which way you go. I will say this though, since you could essentially make your own timelines, we could be here all day discussing different combinations. That being said, I'm going to focus on six major timelines and rank those. And those timelines are the original sequel timeline, the Cult of Thorn timeline, the 20 year timeline, the 40 year timeline, the anthology timeline, and the remake timeline. I don't really want to waste any more time, and it's bell time now anyway, so grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring. Starting us off at number six is going to be the remake timeline. This should come as no surprise if you've been watching my channel, specifically this month. I don't like the Rob Zombie movies. Neither one of them do anything really special to me. I do think that there are some interesting ideas, especially in that first one, but I absolutely hate the execution of it. Michael is brutal, but the entire thing just feels off to me. It almost feels like a caricature of Michael, and that's just not what I want out of a Halloween movie. That's not what I want out of Michael Myers. I, I've said it before. I despise both of these movies, and that's probably never going to change. I don't anticipate that changing. Honestly, I don't anticipate ever watching these movies again, especially the second one. I hate the second one with a burning passion. I know it's got its defenders. I'm just not one of them. So, of course, with all that being said, this timeline is not going to be one that I revisit, and therefore it is my least favorite timeline in the Halloween franchise. At number five, we have the 40 year timeline, which happens to be the newest timeline in the franchise. Look, I really enjoy all of the timelines from here on out, so I'm not ragging on any of them. I'm just talking about which ones I prefer over other ones. So everything from here on out is stuff that I actually love. So of course, this timeline includes the original from 1978, Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. Now, I do enjoy every movie in this timeline, but there's just something about this timeline. I don't anticipate myself going back and rewatching it as much as I do the other timelines. That may be due to nostalgia that I have for the other ones, you know, growing up with them, things like that. That, that, that probably is why that I'm not going to be rewatching these as often as the other timelines. But like I said, I really do enjoy all of these movies. I think 2018 is a very strong sequel to the original. I think that Halloween Kills is one of my favorite movies in the franchise. And I think Halloween Ends is a very solid, um, well, maybe not a solid ending to the trilogy, but I think it's a really solid film. And I enjoy a lot of things about that movie. So it's got four movies in this timeline. And of course, it absolutely retcons out the entire familial tie storyline and I was okay with that. It was a new and interesting way to take the series and I think it brought a little bit of mystery back to Michael Myers which is something that was missing from a lot of the previous sequels. So I enjoy that aspect of this timeline. It's interesting to see Michael who essentially is just trying to go home. He's not after Lori. He is put in her path and she is put in his um, sometimes by her own doing, sometimes by a crazy, psychotic, horrible twist of a doctor. But regardless, Michael himself is not out to kill Lori, despite what she thinks. He is just trying to get back to his house and stare out his window for whatever reason. I'm, I don't think too much about that. I just enjoy the brutality and the kills in um, Halloween Kills, especially. 
So yeah, essentially the reason that this timeline is number five is because I don't foresee myself going back and rewatching this one as much as I do the ones that are going to come after this. By the way, don't forget to body slam that subscribe button so you never miss any of the heart pounding, chill inducing five star matches we have here at WWH. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. Our number four entrant is the anthology timeline. Now, I've seen a lot of people who only put Season of the Witch in this timeline, but I'm including the original film and Season of the Witch in it because I think that that's the way that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill really wanted it to be. Um, it's obviously, and we, and we all know that they did not want to make Halloween 2. They were kind of forced into it. Um, they got a truckload of money, so that happened. But what they really wanted to do is tell a different story every Halloween, which makes sense. I do think that had they done that instead of making Halloween 2, I think Season of the Witch would have been received a lot better. I think it would have been more popular, and it would have been interesting to see where that could have gone, what different stories we could have got from the mind of John Carpenter and Deborah Hill and the rest of the team that was working on these. So I do think that that's a very interesting thing to think about and to, uh, you know, just get those what ifs in your brain and just start thinking about different ideas and things like that. It's fun to me and it's interesting. Now, the downside to that, obviously, is that we would not have had Michael Myers and we would not have had this iconic character that has just transcended all time and space within the horror world. So that would have been a trade-off that I'm not sure that I would be willing to take, but that doesn't mean that I don't love Season of the Witch and the idea of an anthology timeline. I, I really do love it. I love both of the movies in this timeline. Obviously, I love the original Halloween. That's my favorite movie of all time. So yeah, clearly I'm going to love that one. But I love Season of the Witch too. I think it's a very strong movie. I think there's, there's a lot of really interesting and quirky and fun things in that movie. It's kind of dumb. Sure, a lot of it doesn't make sense, but it's a good movie. I think it's well made. I think it's well acted. It's well written. I just enjoy it. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. I just enjoy the movie. So having Halloween and then having Halloween season of the witch as that anthology timeline, it's a really fun timeline. And if you're wanting just something to, um, you know, get your Michael Myers in and then just get a different Halloween story. If you don't want to spend, you know, 13, 12, 13 different movies watching Michael Myers kill people, there's nothing wrong with that. You can pop in the original Halloween and get your Michael Myers fill. And then you can pop in Season of the Witch and get your Connell Cochran fill and all the Silver Shamrock madness. So I do think this is a very fun timeline and it is absolutely worth watching. Next up at number three, we have the original sequel timeline. And what I mean when I say original sequel timeline is Halloween from 1978 and Halloween 2 from 1981. Those are the two movies that I'm including in this timeline. And the reason that I'm including this is because recently in one of my earlier videos this month, I said that I wanted to um, have an edit of both of these movies cut together where it just flows one right into the other. And I actually did that for myself. I had a lot of fun doing it and I had a lot of fun watching it. And it's just fun to me. And these movies flow so well together. They, it's one night, one great big movie, one great big story. And it just works for me. I, it's fun. You spend about three hours watching both movies back to back. And then you've got one complete story, one night. It's, I don't know. I just enjoy it. I, do, I love doing stuff like this, and it's really fun to me, and I absolutely love this timeline. I know John Carpenter doesn't like Halloween, too. Um, he was very clear about that in his letterbox review, and I think I even threw a screenshot of that up in a previous video as well. But despite what he thinks, I love Halloween, too. It's a lot of fun, and I like that they upped the violence and the gore a little bit. You know, Michael in the original one, he's not... I don't want to say he's not violent, but it, we all know that there's not a lot of gore. You see very, very little blood in that movie. Well, that's not the case with Halloween 2. The, the ante gets upped a little bit, and I'm okay with that. I understand why that decision was made, and I am, like I said, completely fine with it. Coming in at number two is the Cult of Thorn timeline. Now, this one is a bit of a catch-22 for me because I love Halloween 4. 
it's my second favorite movie in the franchise as of right now, but I absolutely despise Halloween 5. I hate everything that Dominic Othan and Gerard decided to do with this movie, all of his choices that he made. And I've talked quite a bit about him <laughs> this month, and I'm, I'm trying not to get back into all that because I'm trying to be positive in this video. Um, I get tired of just ragging on him all the time. And I'm not even saying that he's a bad person. I don't mean these as personal attacks. I just don't like what he did with Halloween 5. I think he was a terrible choice for that director's job. And I think a lot of the things that he chose to do in the movie make no sense and absolutely spit in the face of a lot of us Halloween fans. And then you get Halloween 6, which is, to me, a pretty decent movie. I enjoy a lot about this movie, but it's nowhere near as good as Halloween 4. But if you're going to do the Cult of Thorn timeline and have the entire Jamie Lloyd story as horribly as it ends in Halloween 6, you kind of got to do all of them. So you've got Halloween, the original, you got Halloween 2, and you got Halloween 4, 5, and then... I say Halloween 6, but it's not even called Halloween 6. It's just Halloween, the curse of Michael Myers. I, It's just easier to say Halloween 6, so that's what I call it. But overall, this is a really solid timeline with one giant, destructive, angering speed bump. And that's how I view it. It's still the one that I am going to go back to quite a bit because I love Halloween, Halloween 2, and Halloween 4 so much. And I'm a completionist, so I'm obviously going to keep going with 5 and 6. As I said, keep going with 5 and 6. It just it hurt my soul a little bit. Because <laughs> I don't want to watch Halloween 5 ever again, but I know that I'm going to, just because I can't not watch this timeline in order the way that it was released. That's just who I am as a person. It's a fatal flaw, and it absolutely destroys me on the inside every time I do it. But, nonetheless, I do it anyway. And our final entrant is going to be the 20-year timeline. Look, I love H2O as a continuation. And, obviously, it goes from Halloween 1978 to Halloween 2. Halloween H2O, 20 years later. Ridiculous name and title aside. It's a great movie to me. I love it. I have a lot of fun with it. There's the mask debacle that we've talked about quite a bit on this channel. But overall, I really enjoy the movie. I have a lot of fun with it, and I love the way that Lori is portrayed specifically in this movie. I think this is the, um, the better version of Lori. I prefer this version of Lori over the 40-year timeline version of Lori. I like that she feels like a real person struggling to get through all of this trauma from her past. And that's something that just resonates with me. And it, like I said, it just comes across very real and raw on screen. And then there's Resurrection. They completely screwed up that magnificent ending of Halloween H2O to continue on because Mustafa Akkad has a clause in the contract that you can't kill Michael Myers. Yeah, I mean, I get it. He wants to keep the character going. He wants to keep making money. He loves the character. I, I, I get it. I get why he did what he did with that. But man, did it really screw up that ending. That being said, Halloween Resurrection is so dumb. There's a lot of things that I don't like. There's a lot of things that don't make sense, but it's so bad that it's good, and I get a lot of enjoyment out of watching it. I will watch Halloween Resurrection a hundred times before I will watch the Rob Zombie movies or even Halloween 5. Resurrection is something that I can throw on in the background, have a good time with, laugh at some of the stuff that happens, and just have that atmosphere of Michael, you know, in, in the room while I'm doing other things. That's how I view it. And if you disagree with me, that's perfectly okay. I understand. Just don't hate me because that's how I see it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, the 20-year timeline is my favorite timeline in the entire franchise. But there you have it. That is my ranking of the Halloween franchise timelines. Do you agree with my choices? What is your favorite timeline? Or have you created your own headcanon timeline? If so, let me know down in the comments. And if you're interested in Redcon 1 products, I have a discount code that you can use to save 20% off of your entire order. Be sure to check that out. And you can also find all of my merchandise available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash AndrewDreamer or even right below on the channel here.
I've also been reworking and updating the WWH Patreon page, so consider checking that out and joining us over there, or if you would like, you can become a member right here on YouTube. All of the links are going to be in the description below. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. Now that we've talked about all of the Halloween timelines, what are my favorite masks in the franchise? Luckily, you can find out by watching the video that's appearing on your screen now. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.